Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. We are starting our playthrough of Nemesis Untold Stories, number one. In the last video, we did a quick setup and we introduced our characters. Now, the last time you saw my characters, they actually were all gray. I actually had a chance to kind of paint these guys up, so we got our little soldier here. He's all set to go. Then we also have our mechanic. So there's our two guys, they're all set to go. So without further ado, will our soldier and mechanic have what it takes to fix the engines and make it back to the Hybratorium? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table. So now that our guys are on the board, we're going to go ahead and start our first round. The player phase is the first round to go, and at the beginning of it, we're going to go ahead and draw five cards. Now the beginning of these turns are going to seem a little long because I'm probably going to be going through kind of what these cards are and a little bit more of explanations of the rules and how they go, but as we move forward, it should move a little bit faster. So he's got a lot of different cards in here. The first one we drew now is basic repairs, so I can discard this a malfunction marker from a room I, I'm in. I can also repair or, or break an engine in the room. We're not going to be breaking any engines. And that, again, to remind you, is going to be an out of combat action. And it's also going to mean you have to discard two cards along with this card. His other card is taking aim. This is a combat action, and it says perform a shoot action with your energy weapon. You can re-roll your first result on the combat die. Since he's a soldier, he has a little bit more of these combat cards. For example, here's another covering fire. This is another combat card. It says discard one ammo. Move yourself and or one other chosen character within your room, if they agree, without triggering an intruder attack. That's not bad. And then we have demolition. Destroy one closed door. That might help because we got a lot of closed doors. A corridor connected to this room you are in. Or else I can place a malfunction token in a room. And this is that interrupt card that I mentioned in the setup video. That this text isn't going to have any bearing on our co-op game here. But if we want to, this is going to save us from certain actions during the game. Another thing I need to mention is that we have an energy weapon, assault rifle. It has five ammo. I should probably put our ammo on it, and these are one of the things we're going to use. These signify ammo along with other things in this game. This is also going to be your life counter thing as you get hit with wounds. You're going to go ahead and use these tokens too. So our soldier has his five cards. Let's go check on the mechanic. So our mechanic is now going to draw five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. And let's see what five he gets. Now he, his cards are going to be more of repair type cards and or, or pyrotechnics. <laughs> discard any item to place a fire marker in the room you're in. Or I can discard a fire marker in a room I'm in. That will be pretty handy. Here's that interrupt card. We're not going to worry about that one. Now he has fast repairs. I can discard a malfunction marker from a room you're in or repair or an engine. And notice it doesn't take any extra cards to do it. So that's a really good card. We have ingenuity. This one I can discard a malfunction token from a room. I can repair an engine or I can craft an item and any yellow item, when I do craft an item, sorry, you can use a, uh, any yellow item as a screwdriver item. And if you look at his card right here, as I knock everything down, he could make like a taser and a flamethrower using different types of yellow cards because he can make any yellow card that symbol. All right, and our last card is search. You're going to need this card when you go to search in rooms. It says reduce item counter by one. Draw two item cards of the same color as the room you're in. Pick one and discard the other. We're going to see how that mechanic works as we go through the game. Our character here does have a sawed off shotgun and it has an ammo of two. So we're going to go ahead and put two ammo counters on our sawed off shotgun. Now that we have our cards, let's go ahead and take our turn. Moving into the player round, each of our 
players are going to be able to perform two actions and then it's going to pass to the other player. At any time, if you decide to pass, then you can be done. Now, each character can take either basic actions, actions that are found on these cards. I should probably show one that actually has an action on it. For like example, the basic repair card, or you could also do this demolitions card. You can do actions that are found on item cards and you can also do room actions. Each room in this game has its own unique action that can be done inside this room. So if we look at the command center, we can see what it does. The game comes with a handy dandy reference sheet that shows you what each of these rooms do and what you can do inside them. Now, for example, we're at the command center. So right here it says, I can use two cards to open or close doors. It says you can choose any one room and close open any doors in corridors connected to this room. And the small gray text here also mentions that I can actually choose to open or close certain doors. They don't have to all be open or all be closed. But each other room in this ship has their own unique thing you can do. And this has a front side and a back side as well. Now, since we know that our mechanic is really good at fixing engines, we're gonna use our soldier to try to open some of those doors for him. So we're gonna use the command center room action, which means I have to discard two cards. I'm gonna discard my covering fire and taking aim since there aren't any enemies on the board. This will allow me then to open or close any doors connected to a room. Looking at the layout of the ship, the doors are closed to the engines. I'm gonna to try to get my mechanic into these engine rooms to try to fix them. To do that, I think we're gonna use the action to remove these two doors from that engine. During our second action, we're again gonna use that command center room to discard these two cards to go ahead and also open these doors over here. These doors, <laughs> these doors over here, so that now we have access to both of these engines. This is the only engine we don't have access to, but I'm not too worried about that. By the time we get there, we might have a card that gets us through there. Now that our soldier has completed his two actions, we're gonna move on to the mechanic. Our mechanic is going to start by taking a move action from this room to this room. Now you never stop in corridors. You're always moving from room to room. So we're gonna go ahead and take a move action to this unexplored room. Now a move action is considered a basic action and this basic action will cost one card. So we're gonna go ahead and discard our pyrotechnic card and we're gonna take a move to here. Now that we've made it into this room, we're gonna go ahead and reveal the room. We found ourselves the storage room, and this has military items in it. This could be really good. Now to determine what number of items are in there is all dependent on this clue to, or this exploration token or whatever. And I get one, and it shows the picture of a fire. Now normally that would mean that this room is on fire, but in this scenario, we're gonna go ahead and check this against our event section but we're also going to turn our room tile here to the number shown on this that's gonna point at this arrow. This will show you how many items are in the room. And as you search, you're gonna tick this down. So if there were, for example, two items in this room and I used the search action, I would then tick it to one and now we only have one more time to search. Now this token shows us that there's one. So I put it on one and we're gonna go read in our little storybook what that marker means. Looking at our book, it shows that fire is gonna be event four. So event four says pipe burst. The ship has hundreds of veins that silently pump its fluids. Reactor coolant, hydraulic oil, thruster fuel, drinkable water, waste. No one really remembers or cares what goes where until, well, the pipe burst. <laughs> Look at that, that's a pretty cool picture. It says, this character suffers one serious wound. If this character discards an interruption card, the serious wound is reduced to a light wound. And our mechanic, luckily enough, still has his interruption card. So we are gonna go ahead and discard this interruption card so that we don't take a serious wound, we only take a light wound. So we're gonna go ahead and discard our interruption card and we're gonna gain a light wound. So I'm gonna put my marker right here. Now, if we gain another light wound, I'll just move this marker down. And then if we move it down again, we gain a serious wound and that's a card that's gonna actually have some detrimental effects on it that we'll hopefully have to cure ourselves of. But for now, we just have a light wound. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and discard this token and we're going to go ahead and take our next action. Now it'd be really cool to be able to search in this room. It's a military or item of some kind, like maybe a weapon or ammo or something really good. But sadly, I, we only have, I think, three turns before something's going to happen. I would like to get as much of this ship repaired as we can beforehand. So I think he's just going to continue moving. Before we move on, I do want to mention what room action you can do in the storage room. It says that you can search for an item. So I can draw two cards from the item deck of a chosen color. So you can pick any one, red, yellow, or green. You pick one card and put the other at the bottom of the deck. This action, of course, will cost you two cards to do as shown on the room tile. So we're going to discard our search card to go ahead and make another move. We're going to move over to this unexplored tile and it is surgery so we're going to go ahead and put our surgery card down and let's see what our exploration token has for us one and it's the malfunction symbol now normally you would put a malfunction symbol in here and you wouldn't be able to use it but in our case this just signifies what event happens to us also it shows that we have one item in here. Now this is a green room, which means we're gonna be pulling cards from more medical type of things, such as probably bandages and things like that. We're gonna set the token or the item <laughs> count to one, and we're gonna place it so it's pointing at our arrow. We're gonna go ahead and read our event for this room, or actually it should be for this event token. Our malfunction symbol says to go to event seven. Event seven says, shut down. <laughs> it says, guys, I could use some help now. <laughs> all right, and the thing it says here is close all doors leading out of the room you're in. Place one standard ammo injury marker next to your character miniature. It represents air being vented out of the room. Remove it at the start of next round. If the marker is gone and your character is still trapped in the room, suffer one light wound at the start of each round. Once any door leading to this room is open, the effect ends. Oh, this could be really bad because I don't think we have a way to open that door. All right, so this is pretty much going to ruin every plan I have. We're going to take an injury ammo marker and put it next to our miniature. I don't know why I would ever think the nemesis is going to let my plans work. Now, like the event said, this symbolizes air being vented out of this room. I'm just going to quickly pan out. Also, I have to put down four doors to signify that every door to this room is locked. So, since our mechanic has woke up, he's had a really great day. He's gotten blasted in the face by a leaky pipe, and now he's in a room that's venting air. Now, that's going to be the end of our mechanic's two actions. So, it's going to move back over to our soldier. Sadly, our soldier really doesn't have anything to do. I was going to have him move here and start working towards running to an engine, but if I can keep him here, he can again on his turn open all those doors. So, our soldier is just going to pass his turn. Now that means it's going to move over to our mechanics turn. Now, sadly, I really wish I would have known that room was going to shut off and I would have actually kept my search card. But since he's stuck in this room, he again has really nothing he can do. So he's going to go ahead and pass his turn as well. And we're going to move into the next round. So if we look at our help card, it goes on to tell us what the next part to do. It's going to be the event phase. The event phase starts with move the time tracker. So we're going to go ahead and move this to two. The next thing it says is the intruders attack. Well, that's not going to happen. The fire damage is going to happen. There's none of that. We're going to resolve an event card. Well, this scenario said not to do event cards. Also, we're going to develop the intruder bag. That has also not happened in this scenario. And I, I apologize. The time tracker is not being used. The self-destruct track is. So that should have been the second one. But it's a time track nonetheless. So we're going to go ahead into our player phase now. So now if we look at our help card here, we're going to start the player phase. We're going to draw up to five action cards. So he has one, so he's going to get four more cards. One, two, three, four. And let's see what new cards he gets. He gets Nerves of Steel. Discard this card during a surprise attack to ignore its effect. So if we're ever in combat or anything happens of that nature, I'll explain how that works. He has full auto. I can discard all ammo from the assault rifle to perform a shoot action. You deal one additional injury for every two ammo discarded this way. Talk about just unloading on something. He also got his search card and he got a rest card. Now rest states, scan all contamination cards in your hand 
and remove all not infected cards. If any of the cards was infected, the follow, follow the infection procedure. During this game, you're going to take not only wounds, but you're going to gain infections from the intruders actually doing damage or hitting you or some other card effect of that nature. When that happens, you're going to gain these things and you're going to scan them in that little red scanner thing that I showed during my unboxing video. And that's going to tell you if you actually have something living inside you. So if any of that happens, I'm excited to show you it, but it's not going to happen for now. So we've got his five cards. Let's go look at the mechanic. Our unfortunate mechanic has two action cards already, so he's going to gain three more. I'm hoping he gets his demolition card. Well, he got his rest card. We've already read what that one does. He got a search card, and he got a card called technical corridor. Now, this card, it will take one action card, one card plus this card to use. It says, use any room with a technical corridor entrance. Move your character to any other room with a technical corridor entrance. You must pass after that action. So once you perform this action, you do actually have to pass no matter how many other actions you have left. So those are his five cards. I'll show you what a technical corridor is when we move back to the map. The next thing in our player order, player phase, is to move the first player token. So <laughs> sadly, this goes to the mechanic. I was really hoping it wouldn't because I don't want him to go first, but he's going to. And then we're going to perform actions. So like I said before, two actions in each player's round until all players have passed. So we're going to go ahead and start our actions. So now it's the start of the round. I have to remove this token. Now, according to our event, it says that if the marker is gone and your character is still trapped in the room, suffer one light wound at the start of each round. Well, I believe that doesn't happen for the first round because we already removed it at the start of this round. Now, you, I'm also going to show you this is the technical corridor. There are two technical corridors on this map, red ones and blue ones. Now, the red ones are noted by here. So he could move from any of these red dots to any other red dot through that card called Technical Corridors. Now, of course, if he wanted to move through the blue ones, he'd have to coordinate the action through the blue dots. There aren't any at the moment right here, but there are some on this board. Our mechanic is also in the surgery room, and I also forgot to tell you what that does. So for a room action, you can perform a surgery procedure. What this does is you're going to go ahead and discard two cards to scan all the contamination cards, which we don't have any yet. From your action deck, hand and discard. Remove all infected cards. If you have a larva on your character board, which we may see sometime during the scenarios, remove it. After scanning, your character suffers one light wound and you automatically pass for the rest of the turn. Shuffle all your action cards, including those in your hand, and place them in your action deck. It also says, note, after a surgery procedure, you always pass your round and your hand is empty until the start of next turn. I don't think we'll be taking much advantage of this room, but I just want to let you know what it did. Sadly, the only thing our poor mechanic can do is he's going to do a search action while he's in this room. So I can reduce the counter by one, draw two cards of the same color as the room you are in, pick one and discard the other. So our room is at one. So we're going to rotate it to zero. We're then going to take two green cards and we're going to look at those and decide which ones we want. So our first one is close. Our close card says I can dress a serious wound, which means you can flip the serious wound over and you won't deal with any more of its detrimental effects, but you're still going to have to deal with the actual fact that you have a serious wound or else you can discard slime markers, which make it easier for the in intruders to find you. Our other one could be a med kit, which is probably what we're going to do. We can dress one serious wound or heal one serious wound. I think that's really good. We're going to keep the med kit and discard this one. Now, the symbols up here in the corner, these are what you can use when actually crafting items. So if I had this plus another item that worked together, I could create something like an antidote or something. So we're then going to take our med kit and place it here along with these cards. Like I've got my plat. Oh, I'm an absolute moron. <laughs> Activate this item in the storage room. Well, I was in the storage room and I didn't even activate this item. Oh, this probably would have been really good. 
Open or close one door in a corridor connected to the room you are in. Destroyed doors can be closed using this. That would have been awesome. Oh, I'm a, I can't believe I missed that. Oh, boy. I bet everybody watching the video is screaming at me the whole time. Don't move from the storage room. Make your plasma torch. But no, alas, I have failed. We're going to go ahead and put our search card in the discard pile. And since our mechanic is stuck in that room, he's going to go ahead and pass, moving the turn over to our soldier. Our soldier is going to go ahead and start by using that room action again. He's going to discard his full auto and nerves of steel. I don't think he's going to need these. You, discarding those two cards allows me to activate this room, which I can remove doors or closed doors that are going to a room. And I choose to remove all the doors going to that room. His second action is going to be a move action. He's going to go ahead and move to the storage room. And we're going to discard our rest card to do that. And sadly, neither of his items that he has activate by going into the storage room. <laughs> it would be really nice if they did. So those are his two actions. We're then going to move over to our mechanic now. So our mechanic's first action is he's going to discard his rest card. And he's going to go ahead and move into the laboratory. Now the laboratory is a place where you can scan either an egg, a dead carcass of, a, of one of our friends, a dead carcass of an intruder, and if you do, you can gain weaknesses towards those intruders. But that's not really going to pertain to us, which is why I'm not showing you the sheet, because it's really not going to matter. But we do get to look at our token, and it's got one, and then this is normally a silence or a quiet noise token, which is usually pretty good. We'll see what it is for us, though. We're going to turn this room so it has one item, and we're going to go check on what this is for our story. And if we look at our exploration legend, our silence token is event five. Event five says mirror image. Not often you see your own body like that. It's like looking into a messed up mirror. I know I should have let everyone else know, but I also know they wouldn't trust me anymore. The body must disappear. That's kind of weird. All right, it says discard two cards from your hand and continue the mission. So as per usual, this game has totally messed up my plan. I had two cards that could repair engines and one where I could run through the technical corridors. I was planning to actually hold off this for the rest of this turn. He was going to move in here, repair the engine, go through the technical corridor and repair that engine. Not anymore. <laughs> now I got to get rid of two of these cards. I guess I'll get rid of the technical corridor and the fast repair, leaving my ingenuity with me because at least I can fix one of the engines when I get into that room. Oh boy, that was just brutal. All right, so then his second, he's done. He's going to have to pass because I have to hold this card so that I can repair this engine. This will move us again into our soldier's turn. He's going to discard his search card so that he can move over to this room right here. Let's see what room it is. It is the armory. Oh, that's really good for him because he's got something that this that he has that can use this. All right, and we're going to see what the token is. It is, what's that? Oh, that's a symbol for a door. Normally, you would put a door down from where you came from. You'd normally put a door there, but this is just a scenario token, so we're going to have to read what that does instead. There also is one item in the room, so I've set that up as well. kind of wish I didn't get rid of my search card now. <laughs> this is the search card. So let's go figure out what this token is going to do to our poor soldier. Our exploration legend shows that the door token will trigger event eight. Event eight has this happy title called Almost Crushed. I'm sure this is going to be just great. It says it started to close just as I was passing through. Perfect timing. This was not a coincidence. And look here, it says suffer a serious wound to the leg. Well, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> If you're a scientist, suffer a serious wound to the body instead. Well, we're not the scientist, we're the soldier. So our story moment told us that we have to suffer a leg serious injury. So it says here, from now on, the cost of your escape movement action is two. Well, we haven't been doing too many escape actions, so I'm not too worried about it yet, but I don't want to keep getting these serious wounds. At any point, when you have three serious wounds and you have to take any damage whatsoever, your character is then defeated. I only have one card left in my hand, and I think I'm going to keep it, and I think we're going to go on to the next turn because uh, the only thing I'm going to do is go and flip over another one of these tokens, and none of these tokens are any good. They just keep doing bad things to our people. 
We're now going to go ahead and look through our event phase. Our first part is going to be move the time track and self-destruct track. So it's going to go to one. We're getting really close to this, and I don't think that's any good. We haven't repaired any of the engines yet. We also have intruder attack, fire damage, resolve event cards, and intruder development bag. Well, none of these are going to play into effect because none of those are actually happening. So we're then going to go back into our player phase and draw up to five action cards. So we're going to draw up to five cards. We're going to take one, and then we're going to go ahead and shuffle this. And then we're going to draw three more. One, two, three. So now we have an action deck size, or act hand of five cards. We got our search action again. Oh, we got our basic repair card. That's going to be really good. Nerves of steel, demolition in case we have to blow up on a door again. And we also kept our interrupt card. Now let's go check out our mechanic. Our mechanic is going to draw two cards meaning that he has three, so we're going to have to shuffle this and draw two more, four, five. And let's see what he got. Oh, I hope he got his engine cards again. He got demolition, which can blow open a door, computer skills. This one says open or close one door in a corridor connected to the room you're in. Oh, that would have been really good. If you are in a room with a computer, use its room action without paying its cost. Oh, that's going to be really good. I wish... <laughs> That would have been great in the command center. He did get his, he has his fast repairs and his pyrotechnics and his ingenuity. All right, those aren't bad for him. He is then going to pass his first player token back over to the soldier. And our soldier is going to take his first set of actions. All right, for our soldier's first action, he's going to use nerves of steel and he's going to discard it to move into this look. Oh, wait a minute. No, he's not. He's going to use the armory. He has this auto loader card. I can use an action card to gain. No, oh, actually, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I've got a plan. i got to stick to it. Uh, actually, I've, I can come back through because once we fix the engine, we do have to come back, and hopefully then I'll be able to do it because for now, I've got just enough cards to get me in here and actually fix that engine. So we're going to do that. I'll, I'm not that it matters. It's gonna, I'm guarantee it's going to be foiled by this token right here, but let's see how it goes. So we're going to use our action to move, and we're going to move into the emergency room. All right. So the emergency room is a place where you can fix your serious wounds. You can either dress them or you can heal a dress serious wound. Now to heal a serious or to dress a serious wound, you just flip it over and it becomes a serious wound. If you then heal a serious wound, it goes away. You can also heal all your light injuries here if you want to. But we're going to go in here and then we're going to flip over our token. We get one item. Oh, no, and it's that disabled token again. You know, we've seen that. Oh, and if I remember right, I don't like it. I can't remember what it is, though. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't squish his leg. So since we've seen this one before, I'm not going to go ahead and read the story. This is the one that puts that air problem in or sucks all the air out, and it shuts all the doors. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. This is not one of my favorite ones. So we're going to go ahead and put our door markers back up, and we're going to put that red token there to symbolize that the air is slowly bleeding out of this room. But it's not going to matter for long, because in my second action, I'm going to use my demolition, which destroys a closed door in the corridor, uh, to the room you're in. It also places a malfunction marker in the room I'm in as well. So we're going to go ahead and destroy this door, which will remove this. I then have to put a malfunction token there. Actually, I lied. I have to put the door face down. This shows that it's destroyed, so if they try to open and shut it again, it won't work. Those are our soldiers' two actions. Now we're going to move over to our mechanic. Now our mechanic is going to go, he is going to discard his pyrotechnic card. This will allow him to move. He's going to go ahead and move into the engine room. Now that he's in the engine room, you can choose to either check the engines or fix the engines. Well, we know the engines are broken, so we're going to use our ingenuity card to repair the engines in the engine room you are in. We're going to go ahead, discard that card, and we're going to go ahead and take the damaged one out of here, and we're just going to leave the good one there and put the damaged one underneath it. So now we know we have one fixed engine. Those are his two actions. He's in, Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the soldier again. So our soldier here is kind of stuck. Ah, I was so had the cards to be able to do it. He has his basic repair card, but it costs two cards to do, and I'm only holding three. So what he's going to do on his turn is he's actually going to search in this room, and he's going to grab two cards. Now even though it's malfunctioning, you can still search in the room. You just can't use the uh, uh, room action. And this room had one thing to find. I forgot to put the turn it to that. So we're going to go to zero. We're going to take two cards from our green deck and see what we find. We found 
either alcohol, well, that's not a bad thing to have in this situation, scan and remove one contamination card from your hand. If it was infected, take one contamination card. Okay, barf. And this is synthetic food. Draw two action cards from your deck. Oh, I'm totally taking the synthetic food. That's going to be fantastic. We're going to go ahead and put this on discard this card. He's then going to use his interrupt action to move into the engine room so next turn he can repair him. So our mechanic has fixed this engine. Good job, mechanic. He's then going to go ahead and discard both his demolitions at card and his computer skills card to move one here and then discard the other card to move back here. He's going to start going this way to repair the comms room and go for the next engine. With those two actions done, both our characters are going to pass and we're going to move into the next phase. But before we do, we're going to stop for now. Our mechanic and our soldier are both doing a great job of trying to get this ship underway. We've got one engine repaired and we're on our way to get some more. But we're slowly running out of time and who knows what's going to happen. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. This is really a cool way of playing this game. It's a neat little story. I know we haven't found any intruders or done any combat, but it's really neat to see how the actual ship is fighting me itself. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like, hit the bell symbol, and you'll know when the next video comes out for this playthrough. Please leave anything in the comments below. I'd love to hear from everyone. Have you actually tried this campaign? And what do you think of the actual game? Will our mechanic and our soldier have what it takes to fix the engines and get out of here? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table.